Hello guys, this is The Gaming Revolution here and welcome back to an all new Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War video. Today, I want to go over everything that we know is coming next week in the mid-season 4 Reloaded update, which is going to be releasing on the 14th slash the 15th of July, depending on which time zone you are in. So let's take a look at the roadmap and everything that we have left to release in Season 4. So, next week we will be seeing the brand new Berlin Zombies map, Mawada Toten at last. And I'll talk more about that in a little second because obviously the zombie stuff is the most exciting thing in a Black Ops Cold War or Call of Duty in general. I don't know how people can hop on Warzone and multiplayer every day. We do have the Rush 6v6 map coming in Season 4 Reloaded as well. That is a remaster from Black Ops 2. It's pretty much the exact same version just like the other previous remasters inside of Black Ops Cold War. They've gone for one-to-one -one, almost identical remakes with some slight changes but visually wise, they are basically just graphical improvements. We will of course be seeing the Capture the Flag game mode added as well. I'm not exactly sure as to why that wasn't there at launch. I think that's one of the modes that should just be there straight from the get-go. We will of course finally be seeing the Grigori Weaver Operator added to the game as a bundle in the store. In terms of the weapons, we have the OTS-9 SMG left to release and the Mace melee weapon. There might be some surprises too that we will have to look out for. By the way, as we move further into the video, in case any of you are getting bored or upset and you are just at home and you want somebody to talk with, well there is a brand new video chat app called Olive that have kindly sponsored this video. If you don't have any friends to play Call of Duty with, then you can install Olive using the link in this video's description. With Olive a video chat, you can meet new friends and people all around the world. So if you want to share your thoughts and opinions with other like-minded people or you just want to have some fun and entertainment talking to various different people from around the globe, then Olive is the perfect app for you. I have already tried it and it blew my mind at how easy it is to use. You can stream on the app, choose random people and find like-minded people to chat with wherever you are. I would definitely recommend trying it out. As I said, you can download it using the link in this video's description. So bringing it back to the subject of the video, like I said, a second ago, there might be some surprises in Season 4 Reloaded that we don't really expect. The first thing is we do have this map codenamed Echelon that's been leaked from the files of the game for quite some time. There's even leaked gameplay online where the map is predominantly set on building rooftops and there's two satellites on the map. It looks quite a deserty and this is a 6v6 map that's been in the files of the game ever since release. This might be something that we could see in Season 5 or it might be a surprise release in Season 4 Reloaded. Especially with the theme of Season 4 storyline being based around the sleeper agents in Verdansk and Perseus activating them, it would make sense for this map to release this season to be honest, but so far there's not been any word of it. And of course it's getting very very close now to the Vanguard reveal, which is the new Pacific Theatre World War 2 game made by Sledgehammer Games that's going to be releasing in November. And apparently according to the files of the game, there is a live event inside of Warzone that's going to be happening towards was the latter end of season 4, so probably in August, to do with armoured trains and stuff like that, and that is how Vanguard is going to be revealed to the world, in a similar event, similar to the Black Ops Cold War reveal event, and I'm looking forward to that. It's probably not going to be happening in season 4 Reloaded directly, but it's something to look forward to very close after. Maybe season 4 Reloaded is going to be the start of the marketing for Vanguard, where we might start seeing easter eggs inside of Black Ops Cold War and Warzone that we will have to piece together. Maybe there's going to be a similar website to Pawn Takes Pawn leading up to the Vanguard reveal event inside of Warzone, and that might begin next week. Okay, but speaking of Mauer de Toten, we did get the reveal trailer the other day, and I was planning on making a full breakdown of this trailer that we got and everything that we learned, but I decided to not do so. I've just had a lot of stuff going on over the weekend, and to be fair, there's not really that many secrets in the trailer. Most of it is pretty self-explanatory, but recently, the Mule Kick skill upgrades have leaked. So as you guys know, the new perk coming with Mawada Toten is going to be Mule Kick, and it's going to be as a perk machine on Mawada Toten, and on the previous maps and Outbreak, it will be accessible via the Wonder Viz. So apparently the base version simply allows you to carry a third primary weapon. For the Tier 1 upgrade, crafted equipment grants an additional equipment if able. For the Tier 2 upgrade, all enemies have a small chance to drop ammunition. For the 
the tier 3 upgrade, stowed weapons slowly refill ammo from the stock. For the tier 4 upgrade, there's a 25% chance to keep non-retrievable equipment when used. For the tier 5 upgrade, the third primary weapon is recovered when repurchasing Mule Kick. So yeah, I'm glad about that since you're going to be able to keep your third weapon up upon bleeding out or dying when you repurchase Mule Kick. That being said though, I would have much preferred to see Double Tap in Season 4 and I'm sure everyone else would have too. That was the perk that everyone was expecting. It made the most sense since there was recently a buff to Zombie's health on high rounds. But yeah, it seems like the Mule Kick machine will actually shoot the weapons on the side of it when you drink it. There's going to be a cool animation. And speaking of the Zombie's health recently being buffed on high rounds, Trek did release a blog post the other day talking about the patch notes and the changes to Zombies coming with a Season 4 Reloaded. So they said that the Zombies team has been hard at work delivering a steady stream of new content since Firebase Z with the launch of Outbreak and the addition of skill tiers 4 and 5. Frenzied Guard, Toxic Growth, 3 new Outbreak regions, 2 new main quests in Outbreak, new challenges in Intel, new maps and modes in Dead of Sack A3 and Onslaught and more. But we know the community is ready for our next round based map. Good news, this one's worth the wait. As you've seen from this week's teasers and official trailer, Marauder Totem is packed with new undead threats and plenty of new ways to kill them. This includes the new Cerberus Wonder Weapon with four total weapon variants. So we have the base variant and then there's three different variants that I think you can turn that variant into. We're not exactly sure how that's going to work just yet, but the Wonder Weapon from the trailer looks insane. We do see the base variant seems to work just like the chicken in Dead Ups Arcade, where you will have the bullet circling around you, protecting you. But yeah, this Wonder Weapon is going to be crazy. I can't wait to use it. There is also the new craftable LT-53 Casimir, which is basically just the Gersh device. It will send the zombies into the dark ether or transport you to a different area entirely. So you can go inside the portal to end up in a completely different spot on the map, which is probably going to be useful just in case you're about to go down or something like that. Maybe you're about to go down and a teammate could throw the portal at you and save you. But there are some huge meta changes coming to zombies. So they said with the launch of Season 4 Reloaded on July 15th, we'll be making several fundamental changes to enemy health caps, enemy armor durability, sniper rifle critical and max damage, pack-a-punch melee weapon damage, and damage scaling for equipment, support, and field upgrades to turn you into an even more badass undead killing machine. So yeah, this is the change that a lot of people were asking for, I guess. Zombies seems like it's going to be a lot easier after this pass comes through. After the recent health buff on zombies on high rounds, a lot of weapons kind of became broken on high rounds because they just wouldn't damage order and stuff like that because they weren't properly balanced and there was issues with the melee weapons not being one hit to kill forever like they were before. Anyways, the changes specifically include reduced enemy health caps. So for normal zombies, they've reduced to plus 100% at high rounds down from plus 300%. For special zombies, they've reduced it to plus 50% at high rounds down from plus 100%. For elites, they've reduced it to plus 25% at high rounds down from a plus 100%. And for high value targets, they've reduced it to plus 10% at high rounds down from 100%. So way easier than before. They've reduced health of armor for medium and heavy zombies by 30%. They've buffed sniper critical damage multipliers, stock ammo and max damage. They've buffed melee weapon, pack-a-punch and triple pack-a-punch damage multipliers. For equipment, support and field upgrades, the frost blast and energy mine will scale their damage evenly with this update. Equipment and support will now be much more consistent in their ability to kill enemies and lethal equipment and ground-based support will see an increase in damage in many instances. Our damage weapon boss from Season 3 Reloaded will also remain intact with this update, so aim for the head and you'll be cutting through the horde like butter before you can say Deadshot Daiquiri. So yeah, headshots are really powerful now and they will be making the max damage now on high rounds will be 50 as opposed to what it was before 80, so they're bringing it back to 50 from before. They're also making weapons even more powerful with a new feature which is dynamic war buys and this is huge this isn't just going to be on Mauer de Totem this is all maps so in all round based maps starting with season 4 reloaded war buy weapons will have a chance to increase in rarity at the end of every fifth round all the way up to legendary as the rounds go up now you'll have more weapon options to choose from so this is pretty big of course it is really annoying building up all of that salvage to get your weapons up to legendary well you can go a different route now because you can go ahead and just buy a war buy as it increases in rarity 
as you go up and they are dynamic. And by the way, the Mawada Totem main quest is going to be beginning at 10 a.m. Pacific time, which is 1 p.m. Eastern time on July 15th. The Season 4 Reloaded update, however, will be going live much earlier than that at 5 a.m. UK time. I'm sorry, I'm kind of saying a bunch of different time zones here, which is probably confusing you. So I just want to go through the trailer now to just pick out a few key things that I have noticed. I don't really want to do a full breakdown, but first of all, the character that we see at the end. I don't know why, but a lot of people are saying this is Eddie. Obviously, this isn't Eddie. This is Valentina, since she is the one that opened the Dark Ether Breach in Berlin to allow the Operation Boulder, the Nat Nazi agents out from the Dark Ether to wreak havoc on the city. So yeah, that is not Eddie. I do think that Eddie is going to be making an appearance on this map though. I don't think they're going to leave it to the last map. A lot of people do think he could be the director of Requiem and that might be the case. They're basically showing that Requiem and Omega are just two sides of the same coin. They're basically the same. The true evil is within the Dark Ether. And yeah, Raptor 1 is still alive and captive and we're most likely going to be trying to rescue him within the Ether. Easter egg to bring him home since the strike team were captured by Krevchenko and we are now serving for Omega but not willingly though so I'm guessing within the Easter egg we will just break free maybe even from Omega and then within the final map we might just go up against the Dark Ether itself. It does seem like Krevchenko is going to be the new version of Raptor 1 on this map. He's going to be the one talking to us through the Easter egg and stuff like that and he's going to be the one exfilling us at the end of the game. We will be seeing the return of the Krasny sold out on this map and just like Eric has said on Twitter he thinks that probably the Krasny sold out was originally intended for Mawada Totem when they designed it but they brought it over to Outbreak and yeah I don't really know how I feel about that it does seem like Mawada Totem is going to be a smaller map than we expected it does look pretty small from the trailer and having this guy at close quarters is going to be a bit annoying but it does make sense since we're going to be able to get on top of the buildings and there's going to be a grapple on the map and stuff like that he's probably going to be able to use his jetpack to fly up to you and jump down etc and I think it could make for some some really intense situations where you're just running up on the rooftop, you zip line down and have this guy just flying after you. We do see within the trailer the telephone booth where Samantha went within the D-Machina intro cutscene and this exact same spot can be seen within the campaign for the game as well. I already talked about this ages ago in a video but yes a lot of the area from the campaign is going to be playable within zombies. They've reused this area and redesigned it for zombies. I don't have any issue with this reusing areas from the campaign because because they play completely differently within zombies and at the end of the day if it saves them time why not you know they might as well get multiple uses out of areas and the map has a completely different vibe to the campaign but yeah in terms of Klaus he's going to be a badass on this map and he's going to work like a civil protector defending you and fighting off the zombie hordes I do wonder whether you are able to annoy him and maybe he might start attacking you if you do that I'm sure he's going to be used within the Easter egg though we do see within the trailer how to seemingly unlock pack -a Punch. So there's going to be these weird demonic ritual type things with this new special enemy type that really reminds me of the Rat King from Shaolin Shuffle within Infinite Warfare Zombies. I'm guessing these are the Operation Boulder agents. And yeah, I think we're going to have to complete probably three or four of these rituals to unlock the Pack-a-Punch on the map. And when you activate it, there's going to be all of these pink-eyed zombies that will form a ring around you. And then there's going to be this new enemy type with this cape. I like the look of him. It does look like his clothes are uh, sort of more futuristic. Obviously, we know within the Dark Ether, there's stuff from all different time zones in there. From the past, present, future, etc. It's all merging together. Since time works differently in the Dark Ether, stuff can be sent in from the future and end up in the past. I don't even know how time works in there. It's very complicated and very weird. But yeah, within the Easter Egg, we're most likely going to be trying to kill Valentina under the instruction of Krevchenko. But maybe we're going to end up siding with Valentina. We will just have to wait and see. It's good to see that Raptor 1 is still alive and hopefully we succeed successfully save him. I guess that's the only reason why the strike team are now helping Omega and Krevchenko and are willingly going into the city of Berlin because he has Raptor 1 captive. A lot of people do think he died at the end of the Operation Excision Easter Egg and Outbreak but I made a video talking about how maybe he was just unconscious because his body did move after death and that does seem to be the case. He is still alive. I wasn't really sure in that video if he was. I was kind of leaning towards the fact that he's probably dead but maybe there's a chance he's still alive. Well he actually is still alive. Everyone had their heart broken just a month ago now, only to find out he is still alive. Anyways, just a quick reminder that this video has been kindly sponsored by Olive, if you want to go ahead and download the app down in this video's description. Anyways, thank you for watching the video, make sure to subscribe if you're not here for latest and greatest Call of Duty news and information.
So anyways, thank you for watching and uh, bye.